Welcome back to the Home Inspection Whisperer podcast. I almost forgot the name. Yeah, that was, that's pretty good. That, you're right. That's it's right. been a long weekend. Yeah, long weekend. <laughs> Coming back after the long weekend. It is Tuesday, not Monday. And we had a request to do the new SOP update for Texas. So if you're not from Texas, this still could kind of apply to you because this is what people are looking for or state standards are looking for, I would say. And then uh, we had about three or four YouTube questions. We're going to answer all those. We'll answer those first before we go over the SOP update. And then I'm going to talk about the yearly trends of the schedule, how the schedule always goes, because every single year around this year, not just the staff, but literally other inspectors ask me like, hey, what's going on? Nothing's going on. (laughs) You know, it's just normal. I grew up with this. It's kind of. Yeah, it's kind of the thing. Yeah, you get used to it. Yeah. So, um, what'd you do this holiday, man? You know. Well, I uh, I very adulted and very dad this weekend. I built my kids playground. Uh, it's been sitting in the box. We ordered it back in January, uh, and it's just been sitting in my garage because it's been too hot to do it. And so I figured, oh, September it would be a little bit less hot. But no, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a little less hot. It wasn't like 101. It was like 92. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it, yeah. And the one that we bought, we got off of Amazon. And it took me seven hours to build. And But what took the longest was they label all the wood, which is nice, all the different pieces. But there's no organization to it whatsoever. So it comes in like six different boxes. and But they're not in numerical order. Like you pull the wood out and it's jumbled and then you pull out all the fasteners and there's 37 bags of those also not organized. <laughs> yeah. And so each They're not step, labeled? The, the fasteners no, weren't... Oh my no, God. No, it's like you had a bag of bolts, bag of nuts and a different size bag of bolts. And so I had to literally get out a ruler and, you know, because I'm pretty good. I can figure out like, okay, this one's about five inches. This is one, it's obviously an inch, but they had three and a half inch bolts, three and three quarters inch bolts, four inch bolts. Didn't you so, tell me though your neighbor uh, had the same one? It required it took two people two days. Uh, it took them nine and a half hours. So mm-hmm. I take pride in that I built it by myself in seven hours with a lunch break. I remember you telling you tried to. Oh, and yeah. you got a lunch break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I remember you telling me you were trying to beat him. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if beer was involved with the other guys though. You know, probably. Like, yeah, probably. But <laughs> I, I definitely made it known, and, and I kind of set our playground a little bit close to our fence between our two yards, so you can kind of see when I was finished. Yeah. And so we went outside the next day. He's like, "Oh, so I got it finished." He's like, "How long did it take you?" And I was like, seven hours with the lunch break." And he was like, "Oh, man." <laughs> was like that's right, that's, that's right. Funny. But uh. Yeah, that was, that was about it. Just some uh, stuff around the house and just hung out. Yeah, and I got to play uncle this uh, this weekend, and my brother and uh, brother and sister along they brought their two kids over, and uh, you know I don't have any kids, so mm-hmm. you know he's two, and uh, the other one's six, and it's funny like how I thought I like made the house kid friendly because and I, I I guess I didn't do I mean I did a good job you said I did a good job for not having kids but two-year-olds man oh yeah they get everything everything I mean like literally anything they don't think they can get into they get into it or they're not supposed to get into it they get mm-hmm. into it I mean uh it was funny he was like playing with his ball and our tv cord is like hanging out and it we want to put like a plant there but he like all of a sudden it was like TV cord and went right for it. <laughs> I was like, it was just like, it, like something clicked in his brain where I'm not supposed to touch that and I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yep. But uh, yeah, we had a really good, it was fun. You know, we went to the aquarium and uh, they're vegan now. So I got to eat a whole lot of vegan food. Yeah. Uh, I was no, no meat. No meat. No meat. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a good holiday. Nice. Good holiday. Nice. All right. So I want to actually talk about the, uh, I know I said we're going to answer the YouTube questions first, but I think I want to go and talk about the slowdown first. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people always call me around this time of year and be like, hey, Chris, you know, I was slammed all last year and this year, you know, and now I don't have anything on the schedule coming up or, you know, our schedule was like cut in half a little bit and it's always, it's literally repeats itself and what we're nine year going on year nine always the same it's when football starts and when school starts you're always going to have a slowdown and i always say just take the break we'll keep marketing and it'll come back and it's already kind of come back already but oh yeah it's always those weekends football 
and school starts and mm. you'll notice a, a slowdown, a, a dead stop almost. And then it just picks right back up. You're not doing anything wrong. As long as you keep marketing, you'll be fine. Just, just don't stop doing what you're doing when it comes to marketing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we even have an inspector in our own company that he knows it. He's like, I gave you all my, my September call. He's like, I always call in September freaking out because <laughs> you know, the first day he doesn't have two jobs in the day. He's worried that the, you know, the company is going under. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's like, like, no, he's like, like everything. Okay. Did yeah. I do something wrong? Is yeah. the business okay? Yes. It's yeah. School starting. Yeah. He, well, he called me and asked if I had any jobs for him. I was like, I no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not buying a house. You can't inspect my house right now. <laughs> Yeah, let me uh, hire you real quick. Yeah. Too. Well, I think this year, you know, because last year was so strange with the whole COVID thing and it caused the housing market to actually pick up and got really busy. Um, and so we didn't really, and a lot of people stayed home from school last fall. Right. So I didn't feel like we had much of a slowdown last September. So yeah, there was, was no slowdown at all. Yeah. So yeah. this is the first time in, in two or three years that we've actually felt like, okay, people are going back to school, football starting like yeah, it, the new, the normal trend. Yeah. Which and is, also, you know, we call this a slowdown, but we've been scheduled out at least a week in advance for so long that we went to like, Oh, we're only scheduled out two days in advance, which is actually should be normal. Right. But then, you know, I think that people got so used to like, by Monday, their whole week was full. That's actually an unhealthy company. Like, yeah, because yeah. I imagine how many people were had to turn away because we're already booked for an entire right. week. And, and the way the market's been, a lot of realtors that use me specifically within our company have been doing five or seven day option periods, and they're not. You know, we can't fit that in with how busy we've been. Right. Yeah. So, uh, a really healthy company honestly is two to three days if you can stay out booked out two to three days that's healthy but whenever we were booked out like a week and a half i'm like man this is it's a it's a good problem to have but it's actually a problem mm -hmm. you know and with the way we train we can't we there's no way that we would be able to even match that until like the following year because we like to train people so well before we release them we don't mm -hmm. just pick up anyone and throw them in the field it takes a lot of time to create a good inspector but that was a, that was a, one of my little rants there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it goes yeah. it goes back to last week's podcast. Yeah, it goes back to last week's podcast. Yeah, so you're you're going to experience uh, some fluctuations always at this time of year. School starts in football, so uh, just get used to it. And you're right. Last year with COVID, there was no slowdown. That we did have a slowdown whenever they shut everything down for, and we had what like two weeks of yeah like, in March. Yeah, yeah dead. And then after that, it was like we hit the ground running and it was, the schedule was slammed the whole year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we had one spot open. The it's been a time. year and a half. Yeah. Like, no, it's been crazy. So I can understand like people starting to freak out a little bit. We're like, no, actually, that's a normal trend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and enjoy your afternoon off. Yeah. Uh, that, that was probably pretty weird for him. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, he yeah. sounded really concerned when we talked on the phone. Okay, so let's uh, move into the YouTube questions. What do we got? All right, so from our, our last week's video uh, from Insure Home Inspection in San Antonio, he asked, uh, he said uh, he's starting to train his first inspector. Uh, video is great help. He said his question is, what areas of the residential inspection proce process should extra attention be paid to, and what areas do you guys find new inspectors struggle the most with or the highest liability? So um, you answered this question a little bit, and I don't want to cover your what you talked about first. So I'm going to talk about what I think is the hardest part of making a good inspector seem like a good inspector. Mm -hmm. And it's about, you know, I always talk about this. You don't get the dough unless you put on the show. And so you need to learn how to talk the talk and walk the walk. So you have to sound like you're the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not be the smartest person in the room sometimes, but you know, you have to sound like you're the smartest person in the room. And what I mean by that is whenever you're describing a problem, you can describe it in a form where everybody can understand it. And I feel like that's like a very big hurdle whenever we're training a lot of inspectors is they'll start to just talk about the problem. One, it might not it might actually sound like they don't know what they're talking about, or they're talking about it in such an advanced form that the, you know, the computer engineer won't even understand it at all. So mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that we try to work with our inspectors are so they can, so they can actually communicate the problem 
fluently and they understand and the client understand exactly what you're what you're saying yeah and understand the severity or not severity of the problem you don't want to talk about minor joint cracks and that you don't want them to think that the house is going to fall down but also you want to explain you know cast iron plumbing and understand how this can affect them mm -hmm. down the line yeah, yeah, does that, that make sense? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and to elaborate on that, you know, one thing that we train our guys on is as you're reviewing with the client, yeah, you want to point everything out that you feel is, you know, they need to know about. But then at the end, we say, you know, that's a lot of information. Here are the two to three, four things that you want to focus on first. And I, I even stop saying, like, I won't, I won't call them big items or expensive items. Just this is what you should focus on first. And most of the time, it is a big or expensive item. But sometimes it's something that's uh, an easy fix, but like it could be a, a safety concern. Um, and just from the inspection uh, standpoint, from me training the guys, I want to make sure that the guys know when the, you know, the materials that we call out a lot, like aluminum wiring, cast iron plumbing, galvanized plumbing, uh, even masonite siding, things like that, when those were being used, uh, when homes were being built, why they're bad, and how do we go about, you know, are they a problem today or is it something that you can live with for a while? You know, things like that. You know, what's what action steps the client should take moving forward? Because um, yeah, there's a lot of people you, you can identify the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. But you and I know it's not technically in our job description, but they always ask, like, well, what do I do about it? You yeah. know, you kind of need to know, you know, yeah. like, well, hey, if you don't fix your masonite siding, it's just going to get worse or you can to make it last longer. You can paint it. Uh, to get a little bit more life on, but it's eventually going to fall off. <laughs> you yeah. know, you just, but you have to describe it to them in a way that they understand. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing would be, uh, you know, taking a step back and look at the bigger picture, especially when it comes with like how water is affecting the home. Is the home shedding the water properly? Uh, is it draining properly? You know, are there areas where, you know, you have like all these peaks and valleys on a roof line pointing to one window? You know, could that be an issue, you know, in yeah. the future? Yeah, that, I, I think actually I, I went to the ASHI conference and that really, you know, that was one of the things that like sparked my mind. It was it was a building scientist and he was talking about the big picture, but also Mike Gandy, the foundation class that uh, that's put on with my father's company, uh, RETS, uh, Real Estate Training Systems. And uh, just thinking about water you know how water's traveling water's the number one cause of any problem most problems in a home and if you can understand the flow of how water's traveling around the structure uh, it automatically makes you a better home inspector or even have the imagination of mm -hmm. how the that all that water's coming off that peak and it's pointing at that window then it forces you to really look in that window you're like okay well now i need to spay it pay special attention to that window up in corners behind blinds and whatnot and mm -hmm. uh, really getting that investigative mindset. Yeah. I, I think that was a pretty good answer to that question. Yeah, that's, you know, it's good. Big picture. So big picture, we're going to recap big picture and, uh, um, and, you know, being able to describe the problems and identify the major issues, most major issues and the year that yeah, your materials, uh, yeah. the materials and the years that you're going to be looking for it. Yeah, um, and talking it through the client. Yeah, talking in, in a good way. So there's not actually like one thing you know that you're focusing on, but I'd say those are like the big points mm -hmm. when you're training somebody. Yep. Yeah. All right. Next question comes from Paolo, and uh, he wants to know what kind of tablets we use. Oh yeah, that that's pretty uh, interesting. Actually, it kind of leads into another topic where I went tried to move to Spectora and with a, a multi inspector firm, and I realized it's just too expensive and it doesn't really meet the way we like to report on items. Be wow, I'm I'm, I'm I was go about ahead. I was about to go down a rabbit yeah. hole, wasn't I? <laughs> so let's uh. I, I digress. What, yeah, let's do we uh, use Microsoft or Samsung tablets? <laughs> let's answer that question. All right, so let's. Uh, we go to. We use Surface Pros. Uh, Surface Pros. We like to buy Surface Pros fours and up, mm -hmm. uh, and we like to use Whisper Reporter, and we use digital cameras. Uh, and we upload the cameras into the Surface Pro and Whisper Reporter. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, let's just stick yeah. with that because that other podcast is like a. Would, that's a whole nother podcast on like okay. how we report things and yeah. the the uh, materials we use and whatnot. Yeah. 
Yeah, he does ask, uh, does people use their phone for pictures or just digital camera? Most of the time we use digital cameras. I have had a few times in the field where my camera starts getting wonky. You can take photos with your phone and upload them onto the tablet as well. Kind of the same process. You just download them to the tablet and then put them in Whisper Reporter. Yeah, um, and but, I know a lot of inspectors that use their phone mm-hmm. only, and then they write a whole report. It's just the way we write our reports and the way I like it to look just the softwares aren't really exactly there to have the full customization that Whisper Reporter has and you uploading your own photos. It does take, I'd say, probably 30 minutes longer when you're trained in the software, but it, I mean, it's relative. It really produces a really good looking report, mm-hmm. I'd say. Yeah. All right. And the last question, we're going to cover this in a little bit. Uh, Chipstone asks if we can do the Trek SOP changes for next year coming up. So I know that's going to be a big topic for the rest of the podcast. No, th- no, that's really good because uh, uh, it's something that we needed to learn about anyways. Uh, they just, they voted on it and passed it. And uh, I'm excited about covering that. You, you literally, thanks Chip for giving that suggestion because it really opens up the rest of the podcast and gives us something to talk about and help out the inspection community. So that's cool. So um, anyways, before we do that, just to let you know, if you're getting in the home inspection industry, you always get all these like weird complaints. Mm -hmm. And we actually had one recently and I thought it was kind of funny. We had a complaint where we wrote up carpenter ants three years ago and they called us and wanted to let us know that they weren't carpenter ants. Three years later? Three years later. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's just like if you are looking to become a home inspector or join the home inspection industry... You get like the oddest complaints. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not like you, we, you know, the, the, the home changes every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you okay, know. So I have some questions about that. Yeah. Uh, number one was there, did you ask them like, okay, like, thank you. Like, I mean, yeah. what, how do you, how do you respond to that when the, you get such an odd complaint? So actually this was really nice. Uh, Michelle from ACC, she actually handled the whole thing. I didn't have to do anything at all. She nice. asked me, she was like, what do you need to do? I'm like, nothing, you know, I, I, yeah. I don't. And the guy actually wanted to like leave us a bad review. And then she talked him through the whole process and, um, and she explained to him, you know, the home changes. She listened to what he had to say. And she did that from our last podcast. She listened to it and mm-hmm. uh, uh, she listened and she let him talk and let him vent. And she described the scenario and home changes. And and he was like, OK, and then just got off the phone. You know, yeah, he just wanted to vent. That's such a weird thing to vent about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, did he pay for a carpenter treatment and then the. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think I think he was more worried about uh, him selling the home and then then us saying that there was carpenter ants on the property and then them a uh, carpenter ants on the property and him worried about the buyers being worried about it. And we okay. let him know that. Oh, because he had to pro- provide the report. For yeah, what he provide, wanted. something okay. like that. And that makes sense. And we had described to him. They were like, you know, they're going to get their own. Uh, termite report and car or WDI report and go from there. And he, he calmed down, but she was on the phone with him like 20 minutes or something like that. Jeez. Yeah. So I uh, you know shout out to ACC again, because I didn't have to mess with that at all other than just talk to Michelle for a little bit. And she let me know everything she did. So thank you. You know, that's, that's a, and I, I can drop that. Yeah. If you sign up with ACC and you drop home inspection whisperers name, uh, they waive the startup fee, you know, the $200 startup fee. Nice. So moving into, oh, one more thing, actually, one more thing I ran into. There's a new uh, app that's coming out if you are in the home inspection world and we're all used to using super keys. It's called uh, Showtimes and they use master lock Bluetooth boxes now. So they have codes on them, but they want you to open them up via Bluetooth. And you have to download this app, which is free. And you have to start an account with Showtimes, which is free, but it is a pain. And once you have it set up, I'm sure it's pretty easy. But the thing is, is if you're a multi-inspector firm, there's a lot of other steps that have to be taken. And I went out to my inspector's field and I I remember calling both agents. I was like, hey, this app's not working. We're going to have trouble. And neither agent wanted to show up to let us in. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, the buyer's agent was like, no, no, I don't have time to let you in. I'm like, okay. And the seller's agent, no, you're like, no, if you can't do it, they'll just hire someone else. And I was just like, okay. (laughs) So 
I didn't want to leave Mark hanging, so I drove all the way out there, and I was on the phone. He was able to knock out the roof and the entire exterior, but I was on the phone for like 30 minutes uh, trying to figure out the Showtimes app to unlock this box. So I even tried to contact him before we showed up. We created the account, and then I had to contact him again, showing up again. So it is a new thing coming out, and if you do have this Showtimes app, that you need to come in to open up these boxes, get ready for it because it's, you're going to have to show up way early because you're going to have problems getting into the property. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So let's move into the SOPs. Let's cool. do it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I have the Trek website pulled up and so it looks like from straight from the horse's mouth, they adopted these recommendations in August. Um, you can start using them after September 1st, uh, but... Which is, which is now, right? Yeah, yeah, six, six <laughs> yeah. days ago. Yeah. Um, but they're required to be in your uh, reporting and, and how you do your inspection by February 1st of next year, 2022. So we have plenty of time for everyone to learn about this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, you know, they, they give some very generic information about the new SOPs on the website. Um, but then they say that the staff is working on revising the actual printed SOPs, either through the pocket edition that you can download uh, or the, the pamphlet um, to reflect the changes. And they'll be available by the effective date of the rules, which I thought meant September 1st, because you can start using after then. But I don't see any updated version of the SOP online yet, and so it looks like they may not have them ready until February first. Oh man, that would, so that's that's actually kind of obnoxious. So you're yeah. saying like they're like, hey, here's the rules that you need to start following, but we don't have the rules fully printed yeah, we're not, out. We're yet. not printing them out yet. So hopefully they get them to yeah. us soon, um, so that we can start you know getting familiar with them and and changing the way we do our inspections. Right. Um, so like I said, we'll we'll talk about just the kind of generic stuff that they have printed on their website and what we have known just from other inspector uh, forms on Facebook and online. Yeah. And my father, I think he sits on one of the subcommittees. Mm-hmm. And so he, he posted something in one of the Facebook groups recently and we'll cover those. Yeah. So I, I have well. his list pulled up. I have the Trek uh, list pulled up as well. Um, and so through, it says through the general provisions, the new SOPs are going to uh, require an inspector to use reasonable and appropriate tools necessary to satisfy the requirements of the SOPs. And then the next thing is uh, specifying that an inspector that provides any services beyond the scope of the SOPs must be uh, competent to do so. So I guess if you're doing extra tools like thermal cameras, uh, zip levels, things like that, that you actually know what you're doing. So you'd have to take like Mac Gandy's class, or the, you know, that. Yeah, for just the zip level, yeah. Probably nothing crazy extreme where you have to be like a specialist in mm-hmm. it, but a class that shows, hey, I know how to use. The, the zip level yeah. or an or, infrared camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. And then uh, last on the general provisions is... Uh, pools. Pr- yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like pools, pools sprinklers, like septic. Yeah. yeah. You know, septic systems. Um, and the last one is uh, prohibiting an inspector from performing an inspection when the inspector routinely departs from inspecting a system or component until the inspector notifies the client of that departure. So that one's kind of vague because I know we already have the rule in place that if you're not going to inspect a required system, you have to let the client know right. before you do that. Um, and, and why they probably just reword it. They just probably, yeah. Yeah. It. They, they said yeah. some of it's just trying to simplify some of the jargon from years I mean, past. I feel like you could literally turn that into one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're just say, let the client know why you can't inspect an item period. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I get to all uh, that lawyer speak, man, it always gets to me. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in relating to specific components, um, some of the SOP updates that are from the Trek website are uh, specifying how an inspector reports deficiencies in your receptacles, how an inspector determines if a cooling system is operational, which I know that can probably be an entire podcast in itself, uh, because it's an opinion thing, Uh, requiring an inspector to report the visible material used for water supply uh, lines, drain, and gas lines. See, you know, it's funny. We were actually talking about that, and this actually leads into training inspectors too as well. We were talking about, man, we should really do this. And then uh, you already updated our template. So mm-hmm. on our next office meeting, we are going to add that in because we want to make sure that 
you document or you're actually looking at the lines, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But also the, we inspect so many homes, you know, by the time a client calls, sometimes it'd be like two weeks later or a week later. And they'll be like, Hey, do you remember what type of water lines that we had? And we'd be like, man, I've been in like 14 other homes yeah. since then. You know, you're, it's, it's hard to remember unless we take pictures. We take a lot of pictures of items, but sometimes they have everything, you know, mm-hmm. PEX, copper, PVC, CPVC, they have everything. So then you're just like, okay, well. Yeah. Just- yeah, we put it as, as part of a cell, a fail safe as part of our training program. Um, and we, we make it a pick list on the Whisper Reporter, which on that software, if you don't have every single pick list filled out, an auto report comes up at the end. So we'll know, you know, oh, I forgot to check and see, you know, what, what type of material I have. And right. so, but I, we started to do it as like, we want our new, new guys and our trainees to know, like, I got to look at what type of water supply line I have, or if I'm doing an old home, does it have cast iron or has it been updated PVC? Right. So they remember to drop the comments that are needed for those, those bad plumbing systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that, I think that's a really good add on from Trek. I think it's really important that it's something that inspectors should be doing anyways. So mm-hmm. that is one of the, the bonuses I guess yeah, being regulated, but yeah, it's just more information for clients. And like you said, when you get that call back, you know, two, three months later, mm-hmm. you just like, it's in your report, you know, let's look at it, find it on page, whatever. Right. Um, kind of backing up to the, the receptacle deficiencies. I know some of the new things that will be required to report on are uh, tamper resistant outlets not being present in a home, which is going to be every home prior to 2008, uh, which I, I Googled when they were starting to be required is with the 2008. We don't have a comment for that one though yet. Do we? No, that's a, that's a, a new comment that we have to add into our software. So whenever we do, if y'all have purchased our comments in the past, uh, whenever uh, Josh updates the comments, we re email the comments out, you know, I, because they look so good, maybe what we should do instead of sending them the, all the comments at once, we just send them the updated, just the updates yeah. because you know, we're, It'd, it'd be hard to find that out of 2000 yeah, we comments. We have to make it like a different color or yeah, something. Yeah. But yeah, we can, we can, we can just, just do, do like one, one PDF. sheet PDF of like the three or four comments that we updated mm-hmm. and we could send that out to them. Yeah. Yeah. That'll just, be easier. But yeah. if you do purchase the comments after that, we, you, they'll, they'll be, be in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I, I will say I'm, I'm proud that most of our comments, we already have comments for the new things that we're required to report on, but there are, are going to be a few like the tamper resistant receptacle that, we've never had to use before that'll have to be a new comment right and then what what were we going to write at the end of the comment because it, yes we have to we are required to report on it but is it going to cause a home to like burn down or anything or no mm-hmm. you know so like we just need to make sure we don't want them to read this comment and think oh no uh, they're going to have to ask the sellers to upgrade all of these. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, what were we going to write at the end of the comment? Uh, so we already have some comments like this, and uh, it reads, uh, this is an as-built condition, but per Trek standards, we're required to report it as a defi- deficiency. Right. So, yeah, if you're not in Trek, it's still actually okay to even comment and say that there's no tamper-resistant mm-hmm. uh, receptacles in the property, but you can just say this is an as-built uh, condition, you yeah. know, so they're not going to think, oh, I'm going to ask the seller to fix all this stuff, even though they will. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, some uh, clients will. The the requirement for tamper resistant now is, I believe it's any outlet that's below five feet six inches on the wall, which is like every, every outlet. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe if you have a TV outlet on the wall, that wouldn't meet that requirement. But I mean, no one's going to go into a pre existing 1970s home and replace every single outlet if they're already working. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so yeah, our, our comments will, will reflect that, you know, we're required to report as a deficiency, but it's as built, especially on an older home. Right. And what was the other one? AFCIs too. The yeah, the requirement that, that all receptacles are either GFCI or AFCI uh, protected. And you can also, you know, obviously you can do that at the breaker as well for each, uh, each circuit. Yeah, it's funny. Whenever I first became a home inspector, that came out and you'd have to just drop that on every single report, no AFCIs. And then Trek revised it and said, you only need to call it out after a certain year, you know, whenever they were required. And we're like, okay. And now they're bringing it back saying you have to write it up no matter what. And now we have to start describing AFCIs to everyone again. Yeah. I just had like a standard, standard verbiage that I've just repeated every single time to everyone. And it kind of calmed them down. But I was just like, AFCIs are so expensive. You know, they're like 
what are they like fifty dollars a breaker now? Yeah. Oh yeah. And you kind of just want to record yourself saying it once, and just just <laughs> play, it, or, play it back on or your phone. Like pull up AFC. I'd be like, all right, please listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe we can include a, a link to a video so we don't have to yeah, describe repeat ourselves every single time. I'm I'm actually you know maybe I could create a YouTube video and then we just yeah, add a link, link in there. Yeah. This is what an AFCI is. This is how you replace it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, so the next thing would be, uh, and this is a simple item requiring an inspector report water pressure exceeding 80 PSI, which I thought was already a requirement, but I'd have to go back, you know, cause yeah. I'm so used to us operating above the state minimums that, you know, we always point out the water pressures above 80. So it has to, it had to be in there. Yeah. Already. I'd have to go back and look at the, the well, SOP from earlier. And just yeah, to double I mean, check. like what's the point of reading water pressure if we weren't required to like report if it's too low or too high, I'm, yeah. I know that's in the SOP. It okay. has to be because it was, I remember that being a test question, you know, and you were thinking between 40 and 80, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm, I'm so used to operating above the minimum. It's like, I forget what's the requirement for reaction and what's the SOP. Right. Yeah. So, all right. And then the, the next three items actually have to do with the, uh, the new seven dash six templates. Uh, one is adding a separate section under the plumbing to provide a single location for an inspector report issues relating to the gas distribution system. Um, so you're going to have to require, you're required to report what the gas supply material is, and then you're going to have a separate section to put like your gas appliances in there as well. So uh, that's really good because in the Whisper reporting software, we already have that section. So all we have to do is just unsuppress it, mm -hmm. which is fine. And we, and you know, most of the time we have to write up no bonding discovered for the gas distribution mm -hmm. and whatnot. But uh, this is actually really important for everyone that uses other softwares outside of like Whisper Reporter, like you know, Spectora, Home Gauge, what all of them. You, you know, a lot of them have a lot of trouble keeping up with the Texas standards. So if you're outside, if you're using a software outside of, you know, Larry's, which he, I mean, like he already updated it, right? Yeah, I emailed yeah. him yesterday and he got it back to me today. Today, yeah. So, so we're ready to go. He, yeah, the we already have the 7-6 form, but if you don't have, if you're using other softwares, you better stay on them because if you pass that February mark, I guarantee you there's inspectors out there that are looking for you to mess up to report on it. This is a very nasty community we are in sometimes, yeah. you know, like they're going to be like, oh, go to your website. So that's something we need to do. We need to change all our reports on the, the website too. Yeah. So we'll just reports. Yeah we'll, yeah. we'll create all the new ones and okay. put seven down. There you go. That's add my ADD it. kicking yeah, in there. That's my to-do list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ADD uh, just went all, on a tangent there, but yeah. Uh, that being said, yeah, just make sure that you stay on top of it and you get that seven dash six in uh, whatever software you're using. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the last one is just they they've added an optional section for built-in appliances, which we've already kind of had before. But well, like it's specifically built in appliances. So like, like, what, your, like refrigerators. Uh, I mean, I yeah. Like, like those sub zero fridges that are built in yeah. uh, on the fancy houses, uh, wine coolers. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I we, assume you could even put outdoor cooking equipment that's built in. Okay. In yeah. As well. Yeah. We, we already report on that kind of yeah. stuff. So, but they're saying it's required. Is that what they're saying? No, they just, they've changed the, the optional system header to say built in appliances instead of just oh. other systems. But then what about like pools and like... That, that's still there. Yeah, this, oh, okay. I, this is specifically built-in appliances. Oh, they just want another header. I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, sometimes like, all right, cool. Um, so that's what's on the Trek website. It's, it, like I said, it's pretty vague. Um, and what we've seen from your, your dad's list being on the subcommittee is he adds other stuff that's not even listed on the Trek website. So let me pull up his, uh, his list. Um, so yeah, he talked about the water distribution, gas, and drain systems, the GFCI, AFCI. Um, he also mentioned that all windows, two stories or higher with a window seal that is 24 inches or less from the ground, must have a device that prevents them from opening more than four inches. Here, let's go back. So we already yeah. have to describe like the plumbing system, but they want us to, uh, the, the water supply system, but they want us to document the type of uh, drain line system too yes. as well. So cast iron, PVC, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, so it's your, yeah. your plumb material, your drain material, and the gas distribution lines. Wow. All you have to uh, report so, what material it is. Wow, so like any type of gas. So if you have the CSST in there. Mm -hmm. hmm. Copper. Yeah. yeah, I know that's a big thing now. 
Yeah, yeah, we have. You know what's funny? Actually, one time I was watching a video from one of the inspectors up north, and all their gas was being distributed by copper. And I'm like, down here in Texas, you're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. But up north, they do that all the time. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy to think of what the different requirements are per state. Yeah, you know? I was because uh, I was sitting there looking at his video. I'm like, is all your gas copper? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, we can't yeah. do that here. <laughs> yeah, that's a big no. -no. Um, all right, so. And then what was the next thing? The window Windows, requirement. Yeah. And we already have a comment for that, actually, mm -hmm. in the comments uh, that we created. Yep. So that's that's cool. Yeah. Now, we're, you know, we, we've always put that in, but now it's required to report on it. For It's like one of those things that you're going to have to, like, just remind yourself. You're like, okay. Mm -hmm. I always just try to think about, you know, funny, my, my uh, nephew, the two-year-old. What is he going to get into? Yeah. <laughs> you know, after watching him operate, it's like a whole new level of, like, it sets you back as an inspecting be like, oh, yeah, I understand tamper resistant receptacles or locks on windows. Yeah. He literally gets into everything, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems like at least half of the new stuff that we're reporting on is child safety features. Um, yeah. And I'm interested. I just thought of this. You know, they have this requirement for windows too low, but there's also your window seals on the first floor can't be more than 44 inches. Right. And so I'm wondering if that's also a requirement to be reported on, too, or if that's... Why would you have one or the other? Just upstairs both? only. Is that what you're saying? No, even on the first floor. It's, mm -hmm. it's got to be less than 44 inches. So if you have a small child, mm -hmm. they got to be able to, to get them out if that's the only means of egress. Right. And then you're throwing locks on it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. Maybe that'll be the next update. Yeah. We'll see that. what they're going to what they're gonna add into the system. A lot of these are pretty vague. They're saying, hey, this is what's passed, I think. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what they voted on. It's what they voted on. So it's not in writing exactly mm -hmm. yet uh and the last thing that we haven't talked about is uh the absence of carbon monoxide detectors will be called out i thought that was already a thing yeah uh it's not required to be reported on oh we just been doing it just, yeah and that's what i'm saying is like you know we do things our way at a action it's always most of the time it's above the state minimum and so right. it's like it's already ingrained in my, in my brain to report no i'm pretty sure they the reason why we added it was because trek said something about like it was after 2011 or something, it was required to have them in mm. the property. So we yeah. just started reporting on it. Okay, uh, I'll go back and double check the SOP. As, oh, like we'll I said, that's one of those things where like, I know we operate above the SOP, so it's, I can't remember if, it, if that was a requirement or if it's just something that we do. Yeah, it's funny. It's like whenever you first become a home inspector, you know like that SOP really, really well. And then after, you know, you've been doing it five or, you know, nine years, it's just like, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but it's like, what are the exact yeah, rules? What, is, what are the minimum? And man, those SOP rules are just so vague. It's yeah. like, uh, it, it bothers me sometimes, like how minimum the state standards are. But I understand having a minimum, it protects the inspector, but also protects the client too, because at least that we're required to do something. Yeah. But it just blows my mind. It's like, there, you're not even, if there's like no register, air register in a room, you're actually not technically supposed to report on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's because it's not there. It, it doesn't matter if it's functioning or not. Yeah. But, you know, people would like to know if there's no air, air register in a bedroom. Yeah. But I thought that was, I thought, I thought that was funny. We ran into a, car, a situation like that three years ago because it was like a little townhouse, I mean, an apartment complex, but it, it was just, you know, kind of like a, a long row, but they had one register off the HVAC system and it was just blowing air across one whole hallway with like the doors open and stuff. And so I just kind of thought about it and I looked up the rules. I'm like, well, the rules are, you know, you only need to report on what's there, mm -hmm. but I still let her know that there's no air registers in the bedrooms, but you can't even add them unless yeah. you have like duct system running through the ceiling. Yeah, you have to cut through the joist. No, the, no, the, you can't even do it because it's like, you know, it's a, a oh, there's a unit above it's them. a unit above it. Oh, so yeah. like they would have to like do like that rust, that, uh, industrial look where they run ducks to oh, yeah. the whole property or something. Pipes. Yeah, but I there was a tangent for you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long story. Yeah. I hope that one made sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the last thing is going to be uh, garage doors, uh, garage entry doors, not the overhead door, that are not equipped with a self -to -close, self closing device. Uh, you rep report that as deficient. Well, so we already did have to write that up, but I think the way that was written was it needed two, right? Yeah, it has to have two hinges. It had to have two hinges because I think what a lot of 
builders or what I've always seen is there's only one at the very top. Mm -hmm. And I think they're, they're requiring, you need to report on that. There's not two hinges on the doors. I mean, like for example, the, these doors in this townhouse is they're, they're they have four hinges on them mm -hmm. and one hinge probably wouldn't be enough to self close them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see a lot of times, especially on new builds is they, they take the, uh, the pin or the springs out and right. so the hinges are there, but they're not doing anything. Yeah. They, yeah. They don't, they don't, activate them yeah yes so i think yeah. that's it yeah that's yeah. the, the the vagueness that we have so far uh some specific some specifics but also some vague and uh like i said hopefully they'll get the updated sops out to us before february 1st so that we have time to you know make new comments where needed and uh implement them into our our uh inspections nice so uh, with that being said uh, make sure that you always drop comments in the video so we know what to cover or how to answer your questions uh, that gives us the best thing to talk about because Josh and I we probably would only had like 10 minutes of content <laughs> and then uh, Chip was like hey man can you cover the SOP update and I'm like I kind of need to know the SOP yeah. update anyway so we we covered it and um, I'm well, I'm more informed and I hope you guys are too. Yep. So uh, make sure you leave a comment, ask the questions so we know what you uh, guys want to cover and we'll get those comments out as soon as possible. I, I think we're going to wait though until we know it's, yeah, it's in writing. Just adding and adding and adding. Yeah, because I'm not, I don't really want to write up the, uh, the receptacles or AFCIs exactly until I'm like 100% required to because... It's just a conversation that I think kind of dulls the process of for the client. You mm -hmm. know, the, get them to focus on the major items: cast iron plumbing, galvanized plumbing, bad roofs, bad HVACs. You know, a lot. I understand that we're there for safety, but you know, you you got to think that these people should be worried about th thousands of dollars, not yeah. you know, a ten dollar outlet. Yep. Cool. So agreed. That's it. So we're gonna wrap it up there uh, and. Uh, Catch us on the next one. See you guys. Bye.